Glory, hallelujah. Welcome to today, saints, to our Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. Uh, uh, greetings to all of you who are gathered with us on this weekend here in paradise. And greetings and exhortations to all of you who are members of our cell churches who are gathering around the world. Blessings and peace and favor be upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So today, saints, we want to gather around a central message for the global body of Christ, for Christ Universal Church, and for all the saints who are gathered in the name of our Lord. And so we pray that each of you have been again experiencing the fullness of God's glory, the fullness of God's grace as you gather for teaching, prayer, breaking of bread and fellowship in your communities. And today the Lord has given us a message to unite us around on this day from the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Go ahead and make note of that if you like. Uh, Luke chapter tw chapter 18, excuse me, verse 27. And we're going to see some discourse between Jesus and uh, some some of his disciples that is relevant for us today in our life. So as we get, began to look at this portion of scripture, I want you to think about situations and circumstances in your life. Perhaps there were situations in the past. There may be situations in the present. And you may be anticipating situations in the future. And I want you to say these words as you think about situations that seem to be difficult, hard, challenging, and some may even say, impossible. I want you to say with me this morning that all things are possible with God. Let's say it out loud again. All things are possible with God. And that's what we're going to talk about today, that it's not impossible. That will be the title that we would ascribe to this morning's message. It's not impossible. And we're going to see where Jesus had a conversation with some early believers that also dealt with this issue. There are many times where we are challenged in our faith when we face difficult in challenging situations and circumstances. It may be financially, it may be physically, but whatever it is, I want you to believe with me today and I want your faith to grasp a hold of this truth as a reality for your life that it's not impossible. That situation, that circumstance that you're facing, it's not impossible. Because all things are possible with God. So let's take a look at Luke chapter 18. Let's use as a foundational text to this morning, verse 27. We may need to back up a little bit to put it in some context. Yes, let's back up to verse number 18 in order to get this verse in context. So here we see the parable of the rich and the kingdom of God. A parable is a teaching method that Jesus often used to express a spiritual truth using earthly examples or examples that the people that he was speaking with could identify and understand. So in this particular parable, he's speaking about the rich and the kingdom of God. And preceding these verses, he had used several other analogies in order to give the group members as much well-rounded understanding of the concept between our earth, the land we live in, and the kingdom of God that is promised to each and every one of us. So verse 18, let's begin reading where it says, a certain ruler asked him, being Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, etc. Verse 21. All these I have kept from my youth since I was a boy, the man said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the man heard this, he became very sad because he was wealthy. He was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 26, those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? And that's when Jesus replied with our foundational text. Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Say again with me, it's not impossible. Your situation, your circumstance that you're facing, you can look back in your past, that impossible situation has already proven itself not to be impossible. That gives us faith to know that whatever we face today in our current life, that no matter how insurmountable the task or the challenge may seem, no matter how powerful the enemies that may be against us, no matter how sick or unwell you are, no matter how poor you may appear to be, I want you to believe right along with me after reading this text that it's not impossible because all things are possible with God and I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in your power. I believe in your anointing. I believe in the authority that you have. I believe in your dominion. I believe in your majesty. I believe in your splendor. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Hallelujah. And this is why we can decree and declare on this day that nothing is impossible with God. So if we think about the word impossible, that means it's not able to occur, exist, or happen. So there's nothing that is not able to occur, to exist, or happen in your life because of our relationship and our faith and our belief in him. You know, sometimes we just hear a fragmented version of the statement that we need to declare today. Some people just may say, I believe. But you believe in who or what? The key to our breakthrough and our victory is believing in someone. And that someone is Jesus, the representative of God in the earth, the son of God. Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah. And also Emmanuel, God with us. So whenever we want to make a declaration about any situation or circumstance that we may be facing, we want to put our faith in the one who has all power in heaven and in earth. Just as Jesus spoke to the astonished crowd in the audience because not unlike many in our society today, they acquainted wealth with the blessing and favor of God. And that though they associated those who were not wealthy or rich to being uh, perhaps even cursed or not favored by God. And so when Jesus used this parable of a rich man 
and he says you will be denied entry into the kingdom of God, except you are willing to sacrifice or forsake all that you hold near and dear to your heart. The crowd was astonished for surely in their view, a man who is wealthy and blessed and favored by God will gain entry into the kingdom. But Jesus doesn't measure God's standard by our world standard. And this is why we must realign our thinking if it's incorrect. This is why we must begin to see things through the eyes of God and not through the eyes of man. So to those gathered around Jesus this day, his statement, which was, I tell you, it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were so astonished that the crowd asked Jesus, who then, if the rich cannot enter the kingdom of God, and if a camel can go through the eye of a needle easier. Now, just in the natural, if you familiar with this animal called a camel, and if you familiar with a thread needle, the eye of a needle, you can actually see in the natural, it definitely appears to be impossible for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. But Jesus says, even using that impossible scenario, that with God, even that is possible. And this is why I want you to say today, when you think about your diagnosis from the doctor, when you think about the creditors and the, and the debt collectors, when you think about the enemies that are opposing you and your relationships and your job and your business, it may appear to be like a camel and you're trying to believe for it to go through the eye of a needle of deliverance, of healing, of breakthrough or provision in your life. So think about it that way, saints. Think about what that what situation seems impossible in your life. And some of you can look back in your past and, and, and see situations that appeared to be impossible, but somehow, some way you made it to the other side. And you have a testimony to decree and declare in the presence of the saints of the possibilities of the impossibilities happening in our life. I really want this to be a message by the power of the Holy Spirit that will uh, encourage someone, strengthen someone today, help to remove the doubt, the fear, the anxiety that some may be facing in their lives, all because of how Jesus tried to help those who were gathered this day to understand that with man, yes, some of these things are impossible. They are not able to occur, exist, or happen. But with God, someone said me, with God. But with God, all things are possible. Again, the way Jesus expressed it in verse 27 was what is impossible with man is possible with God. Say to yourself, it's not impossible. No, my situation is not impossible because I believe in God. And with God, all things are possible. So I choose to believe in God as opposed to my doctor's report. I choose to believe in God as opposed to my debt collectors. I choose to believe in God instead of my enemies. I choose to believe in God because it's not impossible. In spite of what others may be saying to you and in spite of what you may be thinking within yourself, it's not impossible because all things are possible with God. I really want this to resonate in your mind and your spirit and the, the, the praise song that we sang prior to our gathering here today in paradise. 
was that all things are possible with God. Nothing is impossible. And as we begin to grasp this message, as we begin to meditate upon this message, and as we listen, I pray to the words of Jesus resonating within your spirit and mind today, that with God all things, how many things are possible with God, saints of God? How many things? One or two things? No. Jesus said all things. All things. Yes, that impossible thing that you're thinking is possible with God. It is able to happen. It is able to occur. It is able to exist. It's not impossible, children of God. Hallelujah. You've been listening to Seed Time and Harvest with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned in to today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.